Hello and welcome to Where Living is a Vacation. I'm Joe Johnson and I'm once again joined by Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, welcome back to the yes, studio. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> All right, so it just so happens that today's episode of Where Living is a Vacation, we're shooting it on the very first day of summer. So that seems very poignant because today's theme is how Lake Orion has always been a summer destination, a resort town, a yes. getaway. Um, and, you know, not so long ago, Lake Orion was uh, a way for people in Pontiac and Detroit to sort of escape the city heat and have access to a lake and go swimming. There were cabins mm -hmm. to rent. There were cottages on the lake. So this was, for a lot of people, up north. Yes, this, this, this was up north for them. And uh, <laughs> like from, from Detroit, like you were saying, there's programs that they send down there to uh, Detroit and the other cities to welcome people to, hey, come up north, go to the amusement park, join the rides, go, go take a vacation, pack a picnic basket. And, take the train up. <laughs> yeah, you know, we probably wouldn't even exist in Oxford if it wasn't for the train. Yes. Um, I've seen uh, home movies of the train tracks that still existed. We might see them in an upcoming film in a little bit, mm -hmm. but those train tracks ran pretty much right down Lapeer Road. Um, and that's how people got out here was the train. Mm -hmm. And that helped establish uh, Lake Orion and Oxford and connected Pontiac and Detroit to Lapeer and beyond. So if it yeah. wasn't for the trains, who knows what the future of Lake Orion would have been. Right, right. Maybe still have uh, a whole vacation land up here and be a destination <laughs> for, for other yeah. reasons. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, like the biggest uh, thing that I, that I remember reading about a lot, which got me into researching more about Lake Orion history, is the, uh, about Park Island. Yeah, I don't know, you know, I came out to this community in late 93, mm -hmm. and I don't know how how much longer after I arrived here in Lake Orion, I found out about, about Park Island, and I was fascinated by it. Yeah. And I remember we had a lot of senior citizens that used to come into our old Olin TV studio, which was over by Taco Bell on Lapeer Road, and they would have, they would share memories of going to Park Island, and, and they even said that they would, you know, the, the one guy would try to win a souvenir near for his girlfriend now longtime mm -hmm. wife and I'm wondering how many of those Park Island souvenirs exist in attics and basements here in Lake Orion it'd be really fascinating to come across something like that yeah fascinating because like me here from residents you hear like oh there was a the largest water slide the <laughs> uh, a, um, a, a roller coaster and I'm like okay yeah really, there was all yeah. this stuff but as I started researching, you know, I'm like, okay, let's go right to the beginning. Okay, Park Island, what happened here first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so how did how did yeah. pe oh, so, so people would come out to Lake Orion? There was a train yep. depot right out in front of Greens Park there. So that's where people disembarked. How yep. did they get from Greens Park to Park Island? Yeah. So from Greens Park to Park Island, they would get on the the City of Orion boat or any of the other seven passenger boats that they had, mm -hmm. and take take them right to their destination or excursion around the lake or drop them off at their cabin. So it's their, their time away, their vacation, you know, and before that even, and I was like, okay, even before it was even uh, a park or a vacation, what did they do with this area? Mm -hmm. So, so what I found out was like in 1874, so uh, a guy named uh, E.R. Emmons and a group of businessmen got together, created the Orient Park Association. So if we go to slide, our slide one here, we have, uh, this is an excerpt from a calendar and it's showing like you see the arches, you see um, Greens Park, now known as Greens Park. And um, yeah, you see there's things to do here. And this Orient Park Association mainly just developed as um, um, operating a steam powered launch for the lake excursions. They had a large reception hall on the island where they had religious assemblies and it was mainly used for that. Mm -hmm. You know, until like 1911 when John Winter took over. And uh, in the next slide here, it talks about slide two here has these Park Island amusements. So when John Winter took over, you know, it's like, hey, we, let's turn this into like a destination for vacationers and let's, let's do something here on the island. And mm -hmm. from like 1911 to around 1930s, right before the Great Depression, um, they had everything like dancing, live music. Mm -hmm. They had lunch stands, souvenir shops, like you mentioned the souvenirs. 
and the games you can play to win those souvenirs. Uh, Japanese rolling ball being one of those famous games that they played. But, uh, but yeah, Michigan's largest water slide and a roller coaster and have bo boasted having the top uh, best fishing around town, swimming. And like again, like I said, uh, boat excursions were, were top on people's list to come out here for that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, moving on to like uh, amusements, like the types of games they had. So I apologize for the small picture here. <laughs> but this is actually, if you look up close, it's this Japanese rolling ball. And uh, this is like one of the stands that they had. And that game, how it worked was you had this big wooden board with holes at the very end, and you would roll the balls into the holes, and you score points. Hmm. And as you score points, you win prizes. And those types of prizes are an example of this. So you've probably seen these around. These are flashed ruby glass souvenirs. So they were sold at fairs, but also those are the types of things you would win and people would try to collect them all. Wow. And uh, it's mainly, it's basically just glass that's sprayed with a red, not spray paint, but it's like a, a chemical solution. Mm -hmm. And then they etch out the city name on it. Wow. Or you can etch out a message on there. So, you know, if people have any of these, I see these sold everywhere and like, you know, you can find them on eBay and stuff like that. And I, I know some people in town actually have some, they actually have Lake Orion on them. Wow. Probably when they won them from these from the Japanese rolling ball games. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see those. But, uh, I mean, besides Japanese rolling ball, I mean, the Penny Arcade and um, the, the little, the viewers you can crank and view inside them, the viewfinders. But, um, yeah, these engraved ruby things were around for a while, and you see them in antique stores today. But, like, as well as, besides, like, doing all the fun, like, uh, games you could play, the carousel was a huge, a huge investment. Mm. So this, at that time period, so we're talking about early 1900s, this thing was $12,000. Wow. In today's money, that's, I looked it up, it's $373,000 wow. for this elaborate looking carousel. And uh, if you notice right in the middle, you always see this one guy, of every carousel picture, I see this one guy looking dead on at the picture. The <laughs> wearing operator, the black hat, the, the operator. operator? Yep. Yeah, yeah. He's an uh, Italian operator. His name is Vincent Borelli. Uh, and only played Italian music on this carousel. And he operated it until, they, uh, until the end where they ended up dismantling this carousel. And from what I've heard, it was sold to another city. No clue where it's wow. at, where this carousel ended up landing at. It's very similar to the one that's at uh, Canterbury Village. They have that uh, pavilion yeah. in Canterbury Village that has a beautiful carousel, and it reminds me of that, but I don't think there's any connection to it. But, yeah, wow, it wouldn't it be amazing to track down where that ended up? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, because for something to be that expensive, you'd, someone would either have to part it out or yeah. I don't know, but, but that's uh, a pretty amazing item. The roller coaster, like I mentioned too, um, to somebody today, I posted about the roller coaster, the thriller, and and uh, somebody said, "Oh, that's my my grandfather and his brother built the roller coaster." Wow! And I'm like, "Ooh!" So I, I you know, I posed the posed the question, like, "Did they own a roller coaster company? Was it something they just did out of like, hey, we want something fun to do?" So. Can't wait to hear back. I'll report back on what they say. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you got to be curious about that because there's there's engineering that goes into building a roller coaster so the cars don't fly off the track. So you would hope yeah. that it wasn't just amateurs building a roller coaster. I hope there was some <laughs> science behind it. it it's funny because um, after I found out about Park Island, I wrote a little short story about uh, someone who was thrown from the roller coaster and yes. and uh, haunts the island. Now there's no truth to that, um, but looking at that roller coaster, you just got to wonder how safe it was. But I've never yeah. heard of any actual stories of anyone ever getting injured. No, no, I've I've uh, I've read people describe like what they heard <laughs> on being on the roller coaster, like it's the sound of like uh, if you threw nails down a metal drain, like the sound of that hitting the tracks. <laughs> that hard um, and also you know like you said it vanished when they went around the corner the cart vanished so yeah. the rumor of that wow but it, but interesting like um, to have that roller coaster there and being able to experience that and just hearing everybody everybody shrieking and then it's right. like your typical roller coaster Cedar Point type of <laughs> sure fun fest 
But, um, but at the back of that island over at the end of this roller coaster, there was a, a bridge too that mm -hmm. I learned that crossed over and connected to, to Algene Street mm -hmm. too, which I've heard two stories of how Algene Street was named after Al and Jean, I forget their last name, but it was Al and Jean lived on that street. So okay. they call it, they combined, they call it Algene. Huh. But uh, there was a resident that lived there too and said, oh no, it's named after a different Al and Jean. So, but yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's uh, like a whole other story about how the streets were named in this area. Yeah, right. Um, so, again, with the excursions, we had many double-decker. You know, we had the city of Orion that uh, was a double-decker boat here, which I'll show. Here it is right here, the oh, city yeah. of Orion. There so, are rumors that it, mm -hmm. there might be a boat, at least a, one boat, uh, at the bottom of Lake Orion. And apparently there's some really deep areas of Lake Orion. And I've always been fascinated like if someone uh, were to put on some scuba gear and, and go down there to try and verify any of those rumors. There were stories of, of cars that were put on the ice and people would bet yeah. on whether when the car would fall through the ice and apparently they yes. retrieved most of them but I've always been curious if there are automobiles, if there are boats sitting at the bottom of Lake Orion. Yeah. Yeah, I, that would I would love to go scuba diving to see that, <laughs> especially to see the sign that says City of Orion Pleasure Riding today. Yeah. That would be a, a great find. But yeah, they did dismantle some of these boats and and threw them into the lake shore. Wow. Yeah. So, but with this example of the City of Orion boat, um, you know they had the upstairs had dancing. They had a band up there on the upper deck. So. It was uh, it was an enjoyable ride. It wasn't just like silence and everybody just going around the lake. There was an event happening on this boat. <laughs> yeah, you know they tried to revive that a little bit a few years ago when mm -hmm. they brought out the I forget the name of the boat, something Princess. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And they would launch it um, a week or so before Fourth of July. People were able to purchase tickets to go on this double-decker boat around the lake, and then you could um, go be on it the night that the fireworks took pl took place in Lake Orion. And yeah. so they brought that back for a couple of years, and then I, it kind of went away. And I thought, yeah. wow, that was kind of a neat throwback to recreating that that moment. Yeah, yeah. And whoever created that, I mean, if there's a way to bring that back and somehow, um, yeah. you know, just put a little City of Orion sign on the side. <laughs> I mean, I could just picture everybody taking pictures by it and yeah. have, have a band on there. Oh, geez, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so we have the, so we had the carousel, mm. we had the, um, the amusements. So the one thing that uh, also that, I mean, being in this area surrounded by what, 42 lakes or mm -hmm. something? Um, swimming, swimming oh, right. is huge in this area. The water slide, so here's a, a picture of one of the water slides that was oh, built wow. that um, they end up turning into a toboggan run later on down the road. But this was at that time, the 1920s, you know, the Michigan's largest water slide. Hmm. So um, here's another, here's another picture of three ladies enjoying, <laughs> enjoying the fun and notice like the bathing suits back then too, longer and and so you know, those are a sign of what the times were back then. Yeah, I know that if you were to take uh, Reva Campbell's uh, boat tour of the lake, she talks about the history of the lake and Bellevue Hotel and everything. She has an actual wool bathing suit that was uh, that came from the Bellevue Hotel, one that women would actually wear. Oh, so wow. if you were to take her, her uh, boat tour, yeah. she'll pull it out and you'll get to hold it and touch it. But to think that women were subjected to having to wear heavy wool swimsuits yeah. to go in the lake, that's crazy to me. Yeah, and look, I mean, the dark colors too. I mean, you're in the sun. I mean, it's <laughs> like, oh, I can't. <laughs> I feel hot just looking at this picture. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she also has like one of those souvenir um, of the red glass too, oh, okay. the ruby she showed me. So it's, and it says Lake Orion? Yeah, and it says Lake oh, Orion. Great. Yeah, she was able to find that. And, like That's a, a nice treasured piece. Um, so yeah, swimming and at night and then even during the day they had dancing. So it looks like there was many places you could dance. Yeah. So being whether you're on the boat or um, there was also a dance pavilion, so let's see here. So there's Orion Arc Dancing. Mm. So this one was actually, it wasn't on the island, but this one is over on North Shore, just north of uh, West Flint Street. 
So if you, you go okay. towards the shore there, uh, the Unger family um, owned this. They had an orchestra that provided music. It was back in the 30s. And uh, they had also, as you can tell, they had swimming right out front there. So this building's not there anymore. There's houses there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, right along the shoreline. So it was another expansive area outside of just the park island itself to spend time to vacation. Yeah. So. Speaking of the dance halls, you know, a lot of people ask, well, what happened to Park Island? Why did it vanish? And f the research that I did uh, basically said that there were a number of fires specifically connected to the dance hall, and uh, those fires began the demise of Park Island. I think there were at least two major fires on the island, mm -hmm. and then uh, I don't know how long it, it sat vacant and unused until it was sold and developed into the subdivisions that exist today. Yeah, because I mean, every time they had a fire, I mean, how many times are you going to rebuild? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's costly. And then heading into the Great Depression, you'd seeing how things were going, I'm sure we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> it's not unique to Lake Orion, but I know a lot of towns, especially small towns, uh, mm -hmm. have been ravaged by fire several times over that caused the town to rebuild. You know, maybe they started off with wooden structures mm -hmm. and then they would rebuild with brick structures. So. Yeah. Fire played a, a major role in the history of Lake Orion, both yeah. on Park Island and downtown Lake Orion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially downtown where every structure is connected. Exactly. They're all, I mean, that's just spread. I mean, Verwood, I think, is the only one that hasn't had a fire. Yeah, and that's yeah, it survived that last major one in mm -hmm. 2004, I think it was. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, here's another picture of the one, the infamous photo you've probably seen in, in many areas. That's on the, the cover the of the book, right? The history of Lake Orion yep. book. Yeah. It's in the cover of the book there. You, you see it in some downtown restaurants. Uh, I know the new cigar bar is going to have a nice lit photo of this as well. But uh, yeah, this is in Greens Park here is like the lit entrance. And um, in this, again, in this park, they had, you see there's the lake shop. If you zoom in right in the middle there, there's like, there's the Lakeshore Cafe. There's the Lakeside Hotel that's also wow. here. Uh, and the Lakeside Hotel on this property is owned by the Green family. So once they, um, once that hotel ended up turning into other businesses and insurance agency, and then by the time the 50s came around, yeah, they demolished it and uh, dedicated the park. It's uh, now known as Green's Park mm -hmm. for the owners of that Lakeside Hotel. Wow. Yeah, so it's interesting. But yeah, this photo is so like picturesque, so that's why like whenever I see merchandise around or anything, like uh, when I think of Lake Orion, I think of these arches, I think of the lit welcoming um, part of Lake Orion here, that yeah, main landing. Yeah, stunning. Yeah. Um, here, this other photos on the, on the other side. So when you land at the park, you know, this is like the entranceway coming in. So that's people who've arrived at Park Island and yeah. are disembarking, okay. Yep. So leading up, so you see that the walkway here. Um, but yeah, like I said, going up to Greens Park now, today's Greens Park, you, you mentioned the two railroads. So you have mm -hmm. the, uh, the Detroit Urban Railway, known as the DUR. Um, but that used to be where their depot was where Orion Marine is at now, where the building, the structure of Orion Marine. So that's the Detroit Urban Railway. So that's where their depot was. And then on the other side of the road was Michigan Central Railroad. So that's where AutoZone is at now, that building. So you had a depot on each side. So when people were dropped off, they were dropped off right there mm -hmm. at the landing. Exactly. So it made it super easy. So no wonder when, you know, when John Winter was building this, it was like, <laughs> yeah, they, it's, that's the destination that you simply take a train up there, drop you off, get on your boat, go to your cottage mm -hmm. or go have fun at the amusement park. And probably spent the entire summer up there. Yep, yeah. because there's, it was endless things to do. If you weren't yeah. dancing, you can swim, if you weren't swimming. I mean, you can get on a roller coaster, you could play games, the amount of establishments to eat. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's amazing. But you know, with everything, you know, the Great Depression put a <laughs> really put a stop to a lot of it, the fires you mentioned. Yeah. Um, but I, I did find an old clip from um, the Oxford um, newspaper that I'm like, okay, well, what did they do 
after the amusement shut down. Yeah. So they still they still used the island. They had um, they had county agricultural fairs. They had barbecues, and uh, one of these ads I saw was amateur boxing, amateur boxing at Park Island, Lake Orion. There's no admission. How did they make any money putting on these? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they're they're really trying to attract people to get there, and once you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'd have to frequent the establishments that are there. And, and notice the dates, the 3rd and the 4th. Yep. 4th of July weekend is always huge in Lake Orion. Yes, yes. But, uh, you know, and, and also after that water slide, they were done with that. They dismantled that even and yep. made a toboggan run out of that. So um, in the winter, like along with the putting the car on the lake and let's see how long until it <laughs> <laughs> thaws and drops. but people would talk about the toboggan run where it was so high up that when you went all the way down you can from the island you could get on the toboggan and it'll sling you all the way down and the goal was to make it all the way back to Greens Park <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah it's just a, a little bit of Park Island history and that's just like tip of the iceberg of this place because sure. there's, there's so many stories Gosh, that people what, share about. It must have been something to see. Oh, yeah yeah and being living on the outskirts of the island and yeah. Seeing everything that's going on at this island, hearing everything, and yeah. the smells of the food, the the rolling ball. It's like <laughs> pretty neat. Simply Always amazing do. Yeah. summer event. Yeah. Now, as people may or may not know, Lake Orion was incorporated in 1859, and so when 1959 rolled around, uh, Lake Orion wanted to celebrate their centennial, mm. and it was a really big deal. And uh, when we were at our old location uh, on Lapeer Road there, Penny Peterson, who used to be very heavily involved uh, with the Orion Township Library, uh, she came into our studio one day with some uh, VHS tapes. She said, I want to make a program. And I said, what do you got there? And she said, I was able to get my hands on some home movies that were transferred to VHS, so you're gonna have to kind of forgive the quality here. Mm -hmm. um, but they were provided, these were originally uh, 16 millimeter films provided by James Sheldon, mm -hmm. transferred onto VHS, and we turned it into a little program that has been airing on ON TV pretty much every year around this time uh, for 30 years. Um, but wow. it's fascinating to see uh, Lake Orion uh, in 1959 mm -hmm. Uh, celebrating their centennial. So, yeah. Joey, if you can roll the video, we'll sort of narrate it a little bit as you see it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a big yeah. deal. Tex Beneke, who was part of okay. the uh, Benny Goodman Orchestra, I believe, mm -hmm. when Benny Goodman went missing during World War II, Tex Beneke sort of took over uh, the big band, and they came to Lake Orion for the Centennial Spectacular on yeah. Friday, July 3rd. That's huge. That yeah. might be the equivalent of Taylor Swift coming here yeah. today. Yeah, how you would know? you get that someone like that to come all the way out here? <laughs> yeah, and uh, Tex Beneke, when he was part of Benny Goodman's orchestra, he sang lead on Chattanooga Choo Choo. So when you hear oh, that mm -hmm. song, that's Tex Beneke doing lead vocals. Uh, he also played his sax on their version of In the Mood, which is an all-time great yeah. big band song. Um, and so he came to town, performed for the crowd, and what you're seeing here mm -hmm. is he was asked to crown Miss Lake Orion. <laughs> and so there are the candidates all lined up, yep. hoping to be crowned by Tex Beneke. Yeah. The winner um, was Dinah Lou Roberts. Uh, who was crowned Miss Lake Orion. She was 17 at the time. Mm -hmm. And you can see by her reaction, yeah. it was a pretty big deal. Yeah. Now there's an interesting story about this. After I had seen this footage and we put together this program, I asked some local seniors if they knew Dinah Lou Roberts and they said they did. She still lived in the area. So imagine this older woman walks into our studio and I'm like, you're not Dinah Lou Roberts. Dinah Lou Roberts That's is 17 amazing. years old. She said, no, I'm Dinah Lou Roberts. And she had never seen this footage before. So I provided a, a DVD oh. copy to Dinah Lou Roberts who was able to see this for the first time. Isn't that a cool that story? That is reconnecting. And, and like how this is all filmed, I love how it transferred from the VHS to this because yeah. it definitely gives you that the chills of like wow this is what it was like <laughs> so here we have the village the village of lake orion they're getting ready mm -hmm. for a parade here so um again this is over fourth of july weekend and look at the cars mm -hmm. and uh, all the community groups uh, put together floats and stuff to take 
uh, take part of in this parade. There's you know, yeah, Flint and Broadway, and um, it's really amazing to uh, you know you see little kids in there, and you're like, oh my gosh, this was such a long time ago. Um, but downtown. this is a very unique uh, look at downtown Lake Orion in 1959, where you can see you can recognize yeah. some of the structures, some you of the see? buildings there. Um, yep, totally it's really up. remarkable. So this, I believe, would you say this is Broadway Street? Yeah, And it looks Broadway. like they're going south, I think. Yeah, because on the right, I see what it used to be. I yeah. think, well, twice blessed. There's IGA, so <laughs> yeah, so they're marching, yeah, marching south, yes. And so it's really incredible to see. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously there's been some major changes that have taken place since then, but it's really neat to see a lot of those original buildings are still yeah you can the today. shapes are still there the architecture is still there like I see the funeral home the white building behind yeah, the horse. yeah definitely and recognizable and oh. uh, in a little while you know you see the fire trucks in the parade mm -hmm. in a little while you're, you're gonna see those uh, same fire trucks leave the fire station which eventually became village offices and now it's 313 pizza yes um, but you will see those fire trucks leaving that building which is yes. a really cool little time capsule wow look at that the, you saw the a and p in the background there yes so, so the building hippos. on the left there i mean obviously that's uh, ed's broadway gifts yep. uh, in the one building and across from that used to be the masonic temple now it's green hippo mm -hmm. but yeah that's the, the main, yep you see the uh, pacific in the background there. Yep, I, I kind of want them to, to remove the siding off of the Green Hippo building to reveal that original brickwork underneath. I'd really like to see that revealed. Yes. Um, yeah, glass. it's a shame they covered it up with siding. Right, right. You kind of wonder, like, was there a fire there or something? Well, there was a reason for that. And I love how they, you know, brought out these older cars to, you know, mm -hmm. try to talk about the history of the area. Yep. Because I mean, by 1959, they had some pretty cool cars, so it's right. neat to see them pull out the Model T. Yeah, I see the Model T. From the Franklin Settlement, Camp Franklin, you saw that yeah. banner? That was on the north end of downtown Lake Orion. That's a yep. subdivision now, but for a long time, that was a, a, a camp where kids can go swimming and mm -hmm. uh, there are cabins and everything. And the, there's understand. the railroad tracks. You see the railroad tracks? Yep. So those are all covered up now. I remember hearing a story that at Jacobson's Flowers, uh, they were redoing the parking lot. And as they were plowing up the parking lot, they hit the original railroad tracks. Oh, and they so they it. ended up cutting those into like six inch chunks and yeah. selling them as souvenirs. So yeah. those are probably floating around somewhere too, but. Yeah, Lake Orion Lumber, when I was over there, they, um, they mentioned like long time ago my dad because it's a family-owned business yeah my dad would wake me up early in the morning and send me out there to go shovel coal into the trains because the train would pull right up to the wow. station where the to load them up so here's a game that they played and i can't imagine the fire department doing this today but there were two teams each one was given a fire hose there's a ball <laughs> that was placed in the center there and the goal was to try and push the ball with the fire hose. But as you'll see, uh, anarchy ensued. <laughs> Nobody paid attention to the ball. They just wanted to drench each other. Yes. And so here they are just yes. soaking each other. And the ball's Could you nowhere imagine to be seen. the fire department doing that today? There's the fire truck leaving oh. uh, that side of Flint Street where yeah. the, uh, the old village hall was. And there's the fire department. And, Today, that's 313 Pizza, and yeah. formerly Lockhart's Barbecue, and uh, the village offices. Uh, in addition to all that, the parade and those events, uh, they would set up a carnival. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not exactly sure where this carnival was set up. Right. It's a big grassy area. That's so, a lake back um, there, right? That's, what's there, that? Is that one I of the lakes I can't tell if there? that's a lake or sky back there. I mm -hmm. think that might be sky. Okay. But, but look at this, they yeah. set up Tilt-A-Whirl, and boy, that seems to be flying, doesn't that it? That seems pretty fast. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not sure where that lot is. I, I, I don't know if that is, like, east of downtown. That's where I would guess. Maybe if you go east on Flint Street, maybe that's where that is. Right, because they have a big enough, large enough space to put all of yeah. these. 
So it's very similar to the Jubilee today, but mm -hmm. merry-go-round, Ferris wheel, yep. helicopter, helicopter rides over Lake Warren. Can you imagine mm. that? It's an wow, amazing yeah. time capsule. It is. And yeah, trying to figure out what area that could have been. We're in, but yeah, that's because there's a lot of land there, open land there. Yeah, mm. I would imagine so much of that is developed now. Yeah. But yeah, I love how you know the simplicity of the, the rides back yeah. then. You know, it's and they your Ferris wheel, your carousel. Quick. Yep. Look at that. Even that. Yeah, even that. Look at that. The kids had to just love that when that would come to town and stuff. So of yeah, course, you know, swimming. any celebration in Lake Orion uh, has to involve the lake. So what you're going to see here is uh, not only fun and games on the lake, but uh, Lake Orion for a long time had the Venetian boat parade where people would decorate their boats and parade around the perimeter of the lake. And so you see sort of a, a, a there's look at there's a bunch oh, of people that. on this platform with a with a palm tree in the middle of it. And <laughs> so this was an annual event that took place over 4th of July weekend in Lake mm -hmm. Oregon, the Venetian Boat Parade. Oh yeah. And uh, we'll talk more about that in a second, but uh, yeah, you know, when, when you live in a lake community, all things revolve around the lake. And yep. for those who might not know, I just told this to somebody recently that uh, before the Pink Creek Dam was built that uh, Lake Oregon didn't exist. There were what seven or eight smaller lakes that, they that got together. flooded when the Pink Creek Dam was built and created Lake Orion, and that's what turned Lake Orion into this lake community. And all things revolve around the lake. That yep. was the place to be. And yep. there's just something special about a lake community. I don't know what it is, but yeah, yeah, because everybody knows each other around the lakes of all the cabins, and they're all their their creative names that they had and creative names for their boats and the excursions that they had. So, I mean, you get to see everybody's personality come out, especially on, like, you're gonna mention the Venetian Parade, I'm yeah. sure. And it's funny, you know, you look at those boats and you go, oh, those are antique boats. Well, those were probably modern boats in 1959. Yeah. The Chris Crafts, I love those wooden Chris Craft boats. Um, but yeah, those weren't necessarily antiques. They are now, but right. uh, not at the time that this was filmed. And, it's really neat to see people uh, out there going around the, the lake and it's really great that you know someone had the presence of mind to grab their movie camera and mm -hmm. hop into a boat and capture all this on film right you know it's one thing to see the historic photos that you have access to it's another thing to see these these living breathing people smiling and laughing and right. having a good time oh look at the pets they even have pets on the boat see oh look at that that's creative <laughs> It looks like they, yeah, they all had a lot of fun. A lot of fun putting these special boats together. Yeah. Yeah, so I see that. I didn't see any dragon-esque boats yet, but I'm sure that comes around later. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, so there's more to there. this video. If you were to go to uh, YouTube and look up uh, Lake Orion 1959 Centennial Spectacular, uh, you'll see more film of people dancing and all sorts of stuff. There's a giant cake that somebody had made for the event. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see more of these home movies on YouTube. Uh, look at that yeah, log, log rolling, rolling. contest <laughs> and stuff. Um, Some of these you should bring back because stuff like that looks fun. <laughs> but imagine there's some liability to yeah. having log rolling contest. Part of dra uh, Dragon on the Lake. We'll do <laughs> Totem pole. Walking. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'd last very long on that. No. No. Yeah, my father in law grew up in this area on Judah Lake. Oh, yeah. And he would mention going to downtown all the time <laughs> with his friends. And Dan Dewey being one of his friends, they, they would oh, yeah. always go to downtown, um, you know, playing baseball and the things you do as a as a young child in the summertime and then go back home in the dusk <laughs> yeah 
Looks like they're having races too, mm -hmm. just like the, the dragon boat races we have yep. today. And awards. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like I said, if you want to see more of that film, you can go to YouTube, 1959 Lake Orion Centennial Spectacular. Thanks to Penny Peterson for bringing that film to us. Thanks to, uh, is it James Sheldon, who, uh, who, I don't know if he was the one who filmed it or if he's just the one who provided the home movies to Penny, but we're really grateful that those films were preserved and we can now share yeah. those with Lake Orion residents. Mm -hmm. Now, I came out to Lake Orion, like I said earlier, uh, late uh, 1993. And in 1994, around March, I think it was, we started our first community newscast. And I would go out into the community and I would cover events. And uh, it was a pretty spectacular time in Lake Orion from 94 on because I captured so many things on video from uh, the building of the new high school and Orion Oaks Elementary School and uh, the Orion Veterans Memorial, all that stuff. There were groundbreaking ceremonies and all sorts of stuff that I was lucky enough to capture on video. And one of the things that they tried to revive in 1994 was the Venetian Boat Parade. Apparently, mm -hmm. uh, a after a while, the v Venetian Boat Parade sort of went away and people weren't really doing a whole lot on the lake. So the uh, boat club, the Orion Boat Club that you can see if you're dri driving down Heights Road there on the south side of Lake Orion. Uh, they tried to revive the Venetian Boat Parade. So uh, 4th of July weekend in 1994, Lake Orion was jumping. It was very similar to that old footage we saw from 1959. Uh, over the course of 4th of July weekend, there was the Venetian Boat Parade. The Lions Club Jubilee was set mm -hmm. for uh, 4th of July weekend and of course the fireworks and I got a very intimate look um, at the setup of the fireworks which at the time in 1994 were set up in Greens Park. They would dig trenches, they would bury these these pipes and launch the fireworks from Greens Park. Unfortunately after a number of years people were complaining that the debris from the fireworks was raining back down onto cars. I heard a story that yeah. someone's car caught on fire yeah. because of the debris. So now they launch it from a dock that's positioned out on the lake. Um, but I, re I captured a very quaint, uh, bustling time period in 1994. And it, the Venetian Boat Parade and these events lasted for a few more years before interest sort of waned and then they kind of revived it later. But yeah. uh, here's a piece that I put together in 1994 that captures uh, Fourth of July weekend here in Lake Orion 30 years ago this month, yeah, basically. So enjoy. A Lake Orion tradition that hasn't been seen in at least a decade was revived this past Fourth of July weekend with efforts from the Lake Orion Boat Club, the Township, and the community. The 1994 Venetian Boat Parade was a huge success. Approximately 40 vessels gathered at the boat club Sunday morning before the parade, all decorated with patriotic flags and banners. Captains and crew members took the time to meet each other and check out each other's crafts, which included a number of antique boats. Well, I think uh, in, in, re in addition to recognizing um, the 4th of July holiday, it's just going to provide a lot of community spirit and togetherness. Um, if, if, uh, I'm sure you'll get some more shots. Just all, all around me right now, there's a lot of excitement and anticipation. Um, the children are here, the adults are here. I just think it's a coming together of the community, and, and it's great because it's the same night is the fireworks and we have the street carnival downtown and, and again as I've said before we're um, showing off our greatest natural resource here in the community which is Lake Orion. The parade got underway at 11 a.m. led by the sheriff's department. The boats traveled around the perimeter of Lake Orion in about two hours. Well I'll tell you I was in the street parade last year and the turn turnout for the last few years has been kind of poor. I think we had like 10 participants and you know, the focal point really the 4th of July weekend out here is the lake anyway. And uh, so I talked to the boat club members. I said, what do you think about sponsoring it along with the township and bringing it back again? And they were all for it 100%. I mean, we see all the people here on the island and uh, at the boat club and uh, all the boat club members look like they're enjoying themselves too.
Back at the boat club, participants were treated to lunch and awards were handed out honoring entries in four categories. The most patriotic award went to State Representative Penny Chrisman's entry. Al Cryer's sailboat came away with Best Decorated Honors. This boat entered by Diamond Dave's Jewelry was awarded Best Antique. And the Commodore's Award went to E.R.A. Sorowski and Associates for the Best Decorated Boat entered by a Lake Orion business. Another local tradition that has recently been revived is the Downtown Carnival. Each of the last two years, the Lake Orion Lions Club has been providing family fun during the 4th of July weekend, and this year was no exception. The village closed off the streets of the downtown area to make room for the 1994 Lake Orion Lions Jubilee. Taking place last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, families were invited to take advantage of the games, rides, food, and entertainment. I was born and raised in this town. I kind of like to bring the people back down, downtown and show them that we still have a downtown here. And it helps out. I mean, this brings the people in to show the merchants still got stores down here. So we're working with the merchants on this thing, too. So. Merchants and members of the community volunteered their time during the event, which ran from noon to 1.30 a.m. each of the three days. In addition to providing some fun during the holiday weekend, the Jubilee also raised funds to help the Lions Club continue their community outreach efforts. The money that we, that we raise from the Jubilee goes right into what we call our general fund. Uh, that fund is open to, uh, of course, anybody that's visually impaired, young, elderly, middle-aged. Uh, we also use the funds that we generate to help people that are a little down out on their luck. Uh, some people that need a, a cane or a wheelchair or need a wheelchair ramp built onto their house. So it's basically all the money that comes in, every penny of it goes right back out into the community. Fourth of July weekend activities came to a thunderous conclusion on Sunday night with a fireworks display that lit up the night skies over Lake Orion. Last Sunday's fireworks spectacular was a memorable one to all who witnessed it, but there may be many who enjoyed the show without fully appreciating the work that went into it. The fireworks crew began arriving at Greens Park about four hours before showtime, many of them just local guys who look forward to this day all year long. One of those helping out, Nick Christie, was also instrumental in raising the money to make this possible. A fundraiser at his restaurant, the Orient House, along with donations from the community, brought in almost $11,000. Uh, I think it brings the whole community together. It's the one thing that we do have in this community that's, that's actually left it solid. And, uh, and I enjoy it, and I think everybody enjoys it in the community. It's something to look forward to. It's probably the biggest weekend of the year for us. After the trenches are dug, the guns are then cleared of debris and buried in groups of various diameters. A short time later, the shells arrive and are sorted according to size. Beginning at 3 inches, the shells go up to 10 inches in diameter. The larger the diameter, the more powerful the shell. Shannon Scheidler from Oxford volunteers his time each year to the event. He described the activity on the ground during the event as pandemonium. What we do, we'll load the guns. We have, uh, like in my, say, we'll use my crew. I'm the lighter for our crew. I have a loader and two runners. So we'll preload everything before the show. But then once I shoot them out of that gun, I'll say, I'll get done with my fives. I'll holler, load the fives, and I'll move to sixes. The two runners will bring shells down to the loader. He'll proceed to load all the guns that I've already fired. And then when he's done, he'll tell me they're done, and I'll start over again. At 10 o'clock, the show begins.
It's estimated that over 300 shells were lit during the 40-minute show, and that's not counting the grand finale. Who was that young guy? <laughs> that was me wow. at about 28 years old uh, out here you in were, Lake Orion. You've been covering, covering those events. Lake Orion for... Yeah, 30 for years. 30 years. So We thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, at the time that I'm covering those events, I'm not thinking about capturing history, but here it is 30 years later, and now we're looking back, seeing little kids in those videos that are now married with kids of their own. It's, it's pretty mind-boggling oh, yeah. that I was able to capture those moments. Now, like I said, the Venetian Boat Parade, that kind of went away. It's, it's been sort of revived as part of Dragon on the Lake, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. They do the nighttime uh, lighted mm -hmm. boat parade. The Jubilee, for the most part, has been in downtown Lake Orion, but when they did uh, road construction around 2010, where they tore up downtown Lake Orion, the Jubilee moved to Canterbury Village over yes. by Woodside. And I'm sad to say it was not a success over there. I remember, I remember when I came there. back out here to Lake Orion around mm -hmm. uh, 2012, I went over to shoot video of it and it was just dead. There was no people at the Jubilee. So that only lasted a couple of years yes. uh, before they returned back to downtown Lake Orion, where I feel it belongs. And, you know, people call the Jubilee, which is going to be taking place this weekend as we shoot this. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a reunion for people who've grown up here in Lake Orion and maybe have moved away and, and have, you know, have families yep. and stuff. Now people come back for the Jubilee. It's just been a long time Lake Orion tradition. And then of course the fireworks, as I mentioned earlier, it was really cool seeing them set up and launch the fireworks from Greens Park. but. You know, like I said, there, a lot of damage was caused by it being so close to M, mm -hmm. uh, M24. So now they launch them from, the, uh, from the, the dock or the floating dock out on the lake. Yeah. Now, I remember when uh, there was one year I brought family out to watch the fireworks, and we were expecting them to just be right out there in front of us. Mm -hmm. And to our shock, they had moved them to the far side of Park Island, and they were really tiny in the sky. And we're like, are those the fireworks or are those like somebody launching them from the backyard? <laughs> and we sat there and that was the fireworks. And so then there was a period of time where they did the dueling fireworks. There was fireworks oh. on the, uh, I don't know, I guess west side of Park Island and the east side of Park Island. And they would both be going at the same time. And so they did that for a number of years and then mm -hmm. The Lions Club would would do uh, fireworks during Jubilee, and then just a week or two later, there was the Lake Orion Fireworks Association would do their fireworks, and I felt like they were sort of splitting the audience if they were going to do two fireworks in the span of a week or so. Yeah. So about a year or so ago, the Lions Club stopped doing their fireworks to focus back on the, which is now the Lake Orion Fireworks Association or Foundation, I think mm -hmm. it's called. And so hopefully uh, we're going to have a spectacular fireworks show this 4th of July. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a good kickoff to summer. Uh, we, we always look forward to the Jubilee. Yeah. So. Now, there's also another Lake Orion longtime tradition. I don't know if a lot of people are aware of this. If you live on the lake, you're definitely aware of it. But on the Friday night before the fireworks show, where it, whenever that falls on the Saturday, uh, the Lake Orion residents have flare night. Mm -hmm. And this tradition excuse me, goes back to the end of World War II. When World War II came to an end, they celebrated by lighting up flares around the perimeter of Lake Orion. And that's oh. been going on ever since. So Look if you drive on M24, uh, yeah. specifically Wonder Cleaners that's on M24, you'll see a big sign that says flares for sale. Uh, that now acts as a fundraiser for the Lions Club. Mm -hmm. But on that uh, Friday night before the fireworks, right around 10 p.m., you'll see everyone starting to light their flares, and it is a spectacular sight. Oh, yeah, you see an outline of the whole lake, all the exactly. shoreline. And I think mm -hmm. if you go online, there's some prints that you can buy. A few years ago, when they were trying to set a world record, I don't know if they, they pulled that off, but somebody went up in a helicopter and, and uh, took some photos of the perimeter of Lake Orion being lit up with flares. I'm hoping to talk uh, Lee Smith this year into using his drone uh, to try and get some aerial shots of flare night. So we'll see how that turns out. 
stay tuned. I see fireworks. There was fireworks in the background too. Though. Yeah. I noticed that. That even adds to the whole picture. <laughs> yeah, and it's not official fireworks because those yeah. are the next day, but there are some homeowners that will uh, light some fireworks on flare night, which is something to see. It's oh, pretty yeah. neat. So and lots of activity on the lake, lots of boats. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, a more recent um, summertime uh, event that takes place in and around the lake uh, started as a celebration for the 30th anniversary of the Orient Arts Center. Um, that was founded in 1979, so in 2009, the Arts Center said, what can we do to celebrate our 30th anniversary? And that was yeah. basically the birth of Dragon on the Lake which, as you know, mm -hmm. has become a major, major end of summer blowout. And yes. it gets bigger and better every year. Now, as I was uh, digging in our archives for video to show uh, on this program, I stumbled onto a video that was produced in 2009, the very first year of very Dragon first. on the Lake, when pretty much there was a, there was a chalk art contest where People were encouraged to draw on the pavement, and there were some little things that first year, yep. um, later, uh, which as you'll see in the next video, um, they incorporated uh, Dragon on the Lake uh, boat, oh, the racing dragon boat Racing and all that stuff. So that wasn't yeah. there originally. That wasn't there the first year. That came, they I came think, afterwards. the next year. But uh, not element. a lot of people, including me, have seen this video produced in 2009. And I believe this is ONTV's executive director, Ian Locke, narrating this video. So okay. let's take a look. Ever see a dragon up close? Well, spectators attending the Dragon on the Lake Festival in downtown Lake Orion did just that, and much more. There were many partners that pitched in to make Dragon on the Lake a reality. Conceived by the Orion Arts Center as a cultural festival, ballooned into the wonderful event that drew thousands of residents and visitors alike. Well, the Orient Arts Center is celebrating its 30th anniversary, so we wanted to do something big, and we decided that a community event would be a perfect way to celebrate, and then we found out it was the sesquicentennial, so then we made the event even bigger, and we brought in some wonderful sponsors like Environmental Wood Solutions and Beaumont Hospital and St. Joseph Mercy Oakland, Oakland County Parks and Rec, uh, the Oakland Press, the Orion Review, and many, many others, the Orion Parade Group, Waste Management. Lots of people came together to make this event happen. But uh, Orion Marina was a place that really stepped up and they built a fire-breathing dragon that's floating on Lake Orion. So there is indeed a dragon on the lake. And there was a lot of planning that went into this, and now that that planning's all done, it'll be a lot easier to do next year. I think we've learned a lot along the way, but you know, it was important to bring this community together and and make it work. The fun festive atmosphere was felt by all who attended the event. Even the drizzly skies couldn't keep the crowds away. The many chalk artists on hand had their work cut out for them battling the elements and soggy chalk. But being the artists they are, they stayed and brought their ideas to life. Well, I'm an eighth grader at Scripps Middle School and uh, I'm doing chalk art for Dragon on the Lake. It's a two-day thing, today and tomorrow. What's your subject today? Well, today I'm doing, uh, and tomorrow, I'm doing this, um, a character from a book. The book is called Maximum Ride, and it's a really good series by an author named James Patterson. Well, the thing is, what you gotta do is you gotta draw it all, and then you gotta blend it with these brushes. Like, see, if you look over there, before it kind of um, washed away a bit, there's some, uh, I was gonna do like, kind of transition from like these red all the way to white. And it's really fun. I don't like the rain, it washes away my art, but <laughs> it's a great time. It's really good to just let it out and all. We'll see more of our young artist in a moment. Even with a drizzle on hand, many families still brave the weather. Just surprised at the weather, the, with weather being what it is, everybody's still out here having a wonderful time. We definitely will. The kids want to come back, so this is a great place to come. It's, it's family oriented and it's good, clean fun. Thank you. Thank you. The second day of Dragon on the Lake was even better. The skies cleared and the crowds came.
you were a kid, this festival was right up your alley. Inflatable dragons to crawl through and over, free face painting, free balloon animals, and many arts and crafts for young and old. The musical acts on hand also drew the crowds into Children's Park. The fire station open house was also a part of the festivities, drawing over 200 visitors. But what about the dragon? Well, we'll see him in a minute. Food and fun were not the only calling cards to this festival. The historical element was also a real treat. Historical tours of downtown, local history and pictures, and the telling of the legend of how Lake Orion adopted the dragon as its mascot were all here. Featured artists were also on hand to demonstrate chalk art at its best. A featured artist is usually somebody that they bring in that is a professional that has chalked a lot, and um, they do a big featured piece. And I also did a workshop for the artists that were coming in on Tuesday night, so I trained them how to do it, and I've been street painting about 15 years. Today I'm working on the uh, dragon that was on the website um, and uh, doing a depiction of that. Um, we didn't have real good weather yesterday, so I didn't get a whole lot done, so I'm in fast mode today. Yesterday I worked a little bit on the eye, and I, of course, got it outlined and stuff, but um, the chalk is really difficult. Even it was just kind of spitting on us yesterday, but it's real hard to work with because then it gets real, it almost is like working with glue. And I was very, very surprised at how, how great the community was yesterday, even with the bad weather. Um, we had lots and lots of people here, and people just came out with their umbrellas, and um, it was wonderful, really wonderful. Since the rain has stopped, let's check in with our young artist and see how she's progressing with her masterpiece. Um, well, it's going really good. I got her done. Now I need to do her wings. And this is the wing right now. I need to do the lighter feathers under this finish that up there once that dries off and then I need to do the other wing over there and maybe I'll get a chance to finish the background but it's very nice it's nice and warm and I'm happy it's here because it's better than the rain thank you you're welcome okay now to our dragon legend has it that there was an actual dragon in Lake Orion and residents used to claim to see the beast rise from the waters at various times well we finally have a real dragon for you and it actually breathes fire my name's Lisa Cummins, and I'm one of the coordinators of the event, along with three other people mainly. Um, a lot of people were involved. We had a lot of fun doing it, and, and the dragon uh, was certainly a great addition to the event, and we had a lot of fun building it. Um, great big thanks to Orion Marine and all the guys there. They were, a, they were a, you know, really huge part. They did a lot of it. But probably about two weeks before the event, they started building it in the marina. And then uh, we took it out of the marine after the head was built um, and the neck and uh, part of the body structure. And then we moved it over to my carriage house and uh, we finished building it and painting it in there. Uh, it's shrink wrap. It's actually shrink wrap. And we painted it. And uh, then Scott and the guys at the marina put the um, air horns in the mouth and the fire, the propane tank, and it breathes fire about three feet. It blows fire out of the mouth. It's an awesome sight. Art in many forms was on hand, including glass blowing, caricature renderings, and of course chalk art. All who came had a great time celebrating the history of Lake Orion and its legends, experiencing culture and the arts, as well as spending time mingling with friends and neighbors. So yeah, it's hard to believe that Dragon on the Lake uh, kicked off 15 years ago with that event. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there are some things that are missing in that video, like Dragon Boat Racing and some other stuff. That came the following year, and they keep adding new things every year, and the event keeps growing and growing. Now, in 2015, I believe it was, um, the community got together and asked me if I can help produce a video at Dragon on the Lake. Um, there was a city, uh, Grand Rapids did a video called their lip dub video where yeah. everyone kind of passed through the city of Grand Rapids. We tried to do something similar. Uh, we couldn't quite do it in one continuous unbroken take, but the video turned out uh, really great, even though it was one of the most challenging things I've ever been a part of. Uh, so this was 2015, and uh, let's take a look I've at the Dragon this. on the Lake <laughs> lip dub video. In a sleepy little town in South Michigan 
pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Very challenging to get the entire Lake Orion community to come on board and uh, put that together. And uh, it was tough, but I'm very proud of the end result. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that Reggie Harrison and Rick Maddell who performed mm -hmm. the song Dragon on the Lake. And uh, it's kind of the theme of the, uh, the event every yeah. year. And here we are 15 years later. You know, it seems like a recent Lake Orion event, but even that event is 15 years old, so. Yeah, I like the, the montages you had. You had every, like, uh, different societies in there, different <laughs> groups were all in there. Yeah, everybody the came footage. together to make that happen, so. The drone yeah. footage way up high, yeah. looking down, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, um, yeah. so that's kind of the big end of the summer event for Lake Orion. I hate to even use that phrase end of the summer because we're only <laughs> just now getting into it but yes uh, that's summer in Lake Orion now where yeah. living is a vacation and yep. people came out uh, from all around to Lake Orion to enjoy everything that it has and, and that yep. amazing gem that is Lake Orion and uh, it's uh, it's a, a great community and I'm so happy I came out here 30 years ago and just think somebody will probably be watching this video <laughs> 30, years, think, from 30 years from now whatever happened to that? those guys the johnson brothers yes. <laughs> well dad <geez. laughs> well jimmy thanks for coming out i hope you enjoyed uh talking about summertime in lake orient oh yeah i enjoyed it i learned so much every time i come here yeah so i learned from you yeah so it's great yeah i'm looking forward to the next segment that we do all Please. right and thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on where living is a vacation